Episode 3. It was pouring heavily outside, luckily you had managed to pick up Kenji from school before it worsened. You struggled juggling all of your things out the car while Kenji waits for you to open the door that connects the garage to the house. Mama are you sure you don't want me to help you, silently sighing, you forced a smile as you looked Kenji. No need honey, Mama's got it don't worry, juggling all of your things at once you closed your car door and went inside. And you'd never expect what you had seen next, the house was a mess, the living room pillows everywhere. Crumble up papers all over floor while stacks of dirty dishes were piled up in the kitchen, but your boyfriend was nowhere to be found. What happened? Kenji honey, got up to your room now okay, but mama the house, I'll take care of it, go ahead and change and rest. You kissed his forehead and guided him up to his bedroom as you two went to your own shared bedroom that also looked like a pigsty. You were at your limit at this point, but you stayed calm for Kenji's sake. Coming back down you started cleaning up the amount of trash cluttered all over the house, throughout all of your cleaning you barely even noticed your boyfriend come in the house, with a bag filled with snacks and two cans of beer. Oh love I didn't know you would come home this early, hold on I almost forgot to pick up Kenji. Kenji's school dismissed them early because of the rain, I picked him up, you said coldly, avoiding his gaze on you, oh okay. What have you been doing? I mean you must have been doing something very important for you not to do any of the cleanings here, I was busy, okay, and that was. Just things okay. Geez, what are you a cop that you're interrogating me right now? Well then Kay, do I look like a fortune teller and that I can guess what's this busy thing you were doing this whole time? Why can't you just drop it already? Why can't you just answer me straightforward and not be so sarcastic? You finally looked him in the eye, you were slightly tearing up from anger, all the stress you've been building up slowly crumbling down on you. It's always been like this Kay, I get tired too, but no, you leave it all up to me like I'm your maid. You threw the last pillow onto the couch and stomped your way to the kitchen to finish the dishes instead. Hey, love, please don't be mad, I'm sorry okay, he come ups to you and hugged you from behind but you only pushed him away from continuing to clean the plates. Love please, not now, you still ignored him to which he wasn't pleased with. Why n can you at least answer me, I'm looking like an idiot here. You stayed silent while angrily washed each dish, thankful you were at your last plate and now you started putting it all back, your face still scrunched up. He started grabbing the plates from your hands but you refused and you both started a tug of war with the plates. Eventually, with all of the pulling, you both ended up letting go of plates as it all crashed down to the floor. Your eyebrows narrowed further as you glared at Tsukushima and walked over to your storage cabinet to get a broom and dustpan. Having enough of your mood, Tsukushima follows behind you and grabbed you by the wrist. Why and what is your problem? Tell me. If you're mad at me then tell me, just what do you want? I feel like I'm a fool here talking to someone who isn't even answering me back. If you're mad at me then curse the fuck out of me, or better yet just beat the shit of me. He then starts hitting himself with your hand, while you struggle to pry your hands out of his. Is this what want? Why n is this what you want? Just what why n? Are you tired? Are you giving up on this relationship now? Are you tired now? Yes, yes I am. You finally snapped at him, pushing him away hard at his chest as you gritted your teeth, tears cascading down your cheeks. I am very much tired of your shit Tsukushima K. So fucking tired. I'm tired of cleaning up all of your messes, I'm tired of juggling my work with taking care of both you and Kenji. I'm tired of wondering how you can just watch me break my own back from working hard just to keep this house burning to the ground. You even forgot to pick up Kenji at school because you were busy doing some shit that you won't even tell me. I was busy fixing some papers for the museum, is the museum really that fucking more important to you than your own son? Exclamation mark dot. Tsukushima could only fall silent, feeling his chest tighten at every truthful yet hurtful word you threw at him. I lost my job today, because I didn't show up the past few weeks. Do you know why? Because I was busy taking care of Kenji, taking care of you that I had neglected my work. I had always put you first before anything else K. You then started punching him in the chest and arms while he lets you, his own tears falling down from his eyes as it slightly fogged up his glasses. It's always you, you, always about you. Speechless Tsukushima, is that really how you feel, why n? You could only nod at him, to be busy sobbing to even say another word. I'm so tired of telling others that I'm okay, I'm tired of hoping that when I wake up, the K that I once loved would come back to me. I'm tired of waiting for you to fulfill your so-called, promise, that you would take care of me, that you would love me and be there for me. But I'm always here why n, is this what you call that K, just watching me struggle just to be able to feed both you and Kenji, while you just do nothing. Speechless why n, Oikawa and the others has always been telling me that I should leave you and take care of Kenji myself. But do you know what I'd always do, I defend your ass against them, and it's so tiring to defend you K. You felt your knees about to give out, luckily you were near a chair so you sat down and hid your face in your palms as continue to cry. Why, why n, don't you trust me anymore, don't you believe in me anymore? Dot. You looked up to Tsukushima, breathing heavily as you struggled to mutter out what you wanted to say. 
I believed in you, and that was my biggest mistake. You broke down, even more, when you said that feeling your heart break into a million pieces as you watched him slowly crack in front of you. I'm so tired of looking like a fool. I'm tired of being left behind, am I weighing you down yn? I'm so tired carrying your burdens k, you can't do this anymore yn, I feel as if I'm wasting my whole life on this relationship. Would you be happier and make feel better if I'm no longer here? You slowly nodded your head, feeling yourself go numb, you were beyond tired, you were broken, and so was Tsukushima. He wanted to believe that you were just lying, but seeing how you were right now. It was true that you wanted him to go. Do you want me to leave yn, please, just leave. Finally getting the message, Tsukushima walks up the stairs and into your shared bedroom. Grabbing his travel bag out of the closet that had already his clothes in for the upcoming game season. When he turned around he was shocked to see his four-year-old son by the door in tears which broke him more. Dad, please don't leave, don't leave me dad. Tsukushima crouched down to his level, fixing Kenji's messed up hair while he forced a smile. Take care of your mom for me okay, I love you so much Kenji. He kissed his son's forehead and walked out of the room. However, Kenji wrapped his legs and arms on his foot while he cried out loud. Please dad no, don't leave me please. Tsukushima stopped and pried Kenji of his leg, I'm sorry Kenji. He managed to remove Kenji from his leg and walked down the stairs, not daring to look back anymore. He meets you still hunched up, crying your heart out, I'm sorry yn. You could barely hear anything around from the rain and your own sobs, but you managed to hear footsteps in the front door opening and soon closing. Looking up from your palms you look to see Tsukushima nowhere to be found. Afraid that worst that had happened and he for real left, you quickly ran upstairs and saw your son crying in the hallway. You quickly went over to him so worried why he was crying, dad, he, he left. Feeling your heart sunk in your chest you went over to your bedroom to see the cabinet open and that his travel bag was no longer there. You quickly downstairs and out the door in the pouring rain calling out to Tsukushima hoping he would come back. K, K, K please, I didn't mean it, please no. K, please come back, I didn't mean it, K, K, you shoot up from your bed, your hand unknowingly extended out, feeling yourself out of breath and sweaty. The hell, you run your hand through your hair and tell you feel something wet on the corner of your eyes, was I crying? Remembering the dream you had, you groaned loudly while you hid your face in your palm. Damn it, fucking nightmare, I thought you were already over that yn. Lifting your head up, you looked around your room. When you had glanced at the cabinet it was if the same night when Tsukushima had left had flashed before your eyes that caused you to look away from the cabinet immediately. Guess not then, glancing over to your clock that displayed, 7.30, is the time, recalling it was a school day you sprung out of bed immediately. But unfortunately for you, you got caught up in the sheets which made you fall hard on the floor. Motherfucker, should I, don't mind your mother kiddo, and she's the one who said no cursing when she has foul mouth herself. Hearing your heavy footsteps run down the stairs you stopped just a few steps and pointed to Tsukushima. Tsukushima K I swear if you think you can get away of kidnapping our own son, then you got another thing coming to ya. What in the world are you even saying why n, where do you think I would take Kenji anyway? I'm not even capable of kidnapping, and Kenji's right here. Morning mama, come on dad made breakfast. Kenji stands up from his chair and holds your hands and guides you to the dining room while you stayed beyond confused. Great way to say good morning to us huh sleeping beauty, oh shut it. Kenji honey, explain well, this, no Tsukushima you explain, why didn't, you, wake me up. I did, and since you sleep like a rock I woke up Kenji myself. For your information Henry Stickman, I do not sleep like a rock. Henry who, you wouldn't understand, son. And just be grateful I woke up Kenji before he was late for school. Fine, thanks for waking up Kenji for me, Tsukushima giving you the side eye, and for also making breakfast so enough giving me the side eye. You stood up from your chair and was about to leave when Tsukushima called out to you. Where are you going now, brush my teeth, wash my face, you think I'm going to eat breakfast with morning breath, please. Kenji, you go ahead and eat with your father without me or you'll miss the bus, okay mama. Once you left the room Kenji looks at Tsukushima with a judging eye and arched brow, really dad, what? We both know that you didn't even try to wake up mom, plus I woken up mom many times and she doesn't sleep like a rock. What had really happened, Tsukushima was about to wake you up but insisted not to because he knew how exhausted you were yesterday. But he also walked in when you were turning and going side to side in your sleep. So he woke up Kenji himself and prepared breakfast along with Kenji's lunch while you slept. Okay you caught me Mr. Detective, Tsunere attitude much dad, Tsukushima choked his water at the unexpected comment from his son. Fucking shit, dad you alright, where the hell ek did you heard that from, from my uncles, preferably uncle Hanada, Kagayama and Yamaguchi. Kenji flashed his innocent smile at Tsukushima and he just smiled back when actuality was cursing hexes at his friends. You soon then came down, and joined them at the dinner table, sitting down next to Kenji facing opposite to Tsukushima. Tsukushima pushes a plate that was already prepared with food on it towards you though he didn't look at you in the eyes. Staring at the plate, you glance towards the blonde and back down to the plate with something written out in ketchup, it was in kanji to which you knew Kenji wouldn't understand, I'm sorry love, please let me make it up to you. I'm finished, I better get going before I miss the bus, okay sweetheart, bye mama. 
He walks over to you as you kiss him on the forehead, he then walks over to Tsukushima and hugs him tight. Bye dad, take care kiddo, don't forget your lunch. KK, alright I'm off, stay safe. And please stay out of trouble, I don't want a repeat of what happened last time, I will. Once Kenji let the house, you smurred your rice over the ketchup note while you silently ate your breakfast. To which you were internally screaming because of how good it tasted, but you didn't him to know it so you just kept a straight face. Kenji got in trouble, since when, what happened, none of your business, also wasn't I clear yesterday with no talking to each other. Oh come on why n, that's just childish, can we at least make an exception when it comes to Kenji, no. Throughout the whole conversation you had already finished your meal and was about to put it in sync when Tsukushima slams his hand on the table, what the hell is your problem, looking up you were met with his face once again this time it was inches away from yours. Your heart pounded in your chest at the sudden closeness between you two, I ain't leaving this spot until we've made an agreement here why n. You gulped down the lump in your throat, telling him through your eyes that he should back away before you threw hands at him, but he didn't. It was as if you two had an intense staring contest, none of you dared to look away. Finally giving in despite your pride not letting you, you sighed. Fine, we'll discuss some terms and conditions, now get your salty ass face away from me. He smirked in victory and took the seat next to you, his eyes never left you. At this point you're screaming in your head after what had happened, and if only you could see the bright pink painted all over your face. It was sight to see, and he enjoyed every bit of it. First my terms and conditions, go ahead. Number 1, the distance between us has to be 6 feet apart so shoo your ass 6 feet away, 6 feet. Yes, a whole Ushijima Wakatoshi lying on the floor apart from me, the man is literally 6 foot 3, and how are you even able to hear me? Did I stutter? Now go 6 feet, right now. Are you a kindergartner or more deaf than blind that I have to repeat myself every time? Fine, fine, I'm doing it. It wasn't that far of a distance, and you two were still able to hear each other, but the whole time, Tsukushima had his face scrunched up, annoyed. This is ridiculous, you wanted terms and conditions so I'm giving it to you, well terms and conditions that aren't this absurd. Oh hush, okay next. I'll allow talking about Kenji, and that's just it, nothing else, no personal matter, just things like Kenji, his education, what he's been doing and that's it. That I can agree on, anything else. Other than that in my bedroom if off limits, I'm satisfied with this, okay now for you. Let me be a father to Kenji, please don't strip me of rights to Kenji, fine, done. Thank you, even if I wanted to, I know Kenji won't let me, okay, is that all? If it is then this conversation ends, I'm not ending it there why n, then spill it out, I haven't got all day. I want you back why n, I want us and Kenji to be a family again. I'm really am sorry for everything why n, please forgive me. You stared at him in disbelief, but your chest tightened at his words, composing yourself you gave him an answer. Non-negotiable, I'm already in a relationship. One I'm much happier in. I can agree to be co-parents, but us, no, what happened between us, dead, why and I really am sorry. Fine apology accepted, but us, still no. You stood up from your chair and turned on your heel to go back upstairs and get ready for work when you had bumped into your chair. Why and are you okay, of course I'm okay, I've been okay for years. Are you sure, cause you seem like you're going weak, you quickly turned to look at him with an arched brow. Just because you said you wanted me back, no. No, you stumbled once again, Tsukushima about to catch when you regained balance and extended your arms out. Up up up, six feet at all times, you stuttered while you paced quickly up the stairs and into your bedroom. Closing the door behind you, you finally caught your breath that you didn't that you were holding in the whole time. Shit. I'm going to miss you princess, so much, I'm going to miss you too, Toru. You whispered softly in his ear, enjoying every bit of his warmth before he flies back to Argentina for the game season and you have to wait for another three months just to see him again. I'll call you and Kenji whenever I can, don't worry, I don't want us to be a distraction to you Toru. Nonsense, you're never a distraction to me princess, he cups your cheeks, his thumb brushing over the corner of your eyes to wipe away the little droplets of tears away. I mean if you want me to stay I can negotiate things with my coach, don't even think about it Shitikawa. You and Iwaizumi said in unison as you slapped his arms while Iwaizumi slapped the back of his head. Gah, I'm leaving the country for three months and this is what I get as a farewell gift from you too, you're in your team starting lineup idiot, and they need you, so no excuses. Those two really don't go easy with the hitting when it comes to Oikawa-san, do they? Nope, they don't. Got a combo hit from those two back in high school, and let's just say my back was never the same ever again. Uncle Toru, your son then runs up to Oikawa and he immediately opens his arm to go and hug him, as if he was never hit earlier. Go and beat their butts Uncle Toru, of course I will buddy, I'm not letting them get a win so easily, look after your mom for me, MK, for sure, I'll miss you Uncle Toru. Oikawa smiles at Kenji while he ruffles the top of his head, which made your heart flutter. I'll miss you too Kenji, seeing the three of you being so happy, Tsukushima could feel his chest tighten, regretting having to come to the airport to see Oikawa off. He kept his usually dry face but inside he felt envious and wished to be in Oikawa's shoes and be loved by you again. Flight G34 for Argentina is now onboarding, Flight G34 for Argentina is now onboarding.
That's my plane, Oikawa quickly kisses Kenji on the forehead and greets his final farewell to his friends, and it got to you he pulls you to one last hug. He glances over to Tsukushima, checking if he was watching to which he was to which. Oikawa proceeds to glare at him before slowly pulling away and smiling innocently as if he didn't throw daggers towards Tsukushima that pissed him off. Have a safe flight Toru, hem, I love you, love you too, now go before you'll miss your flight. Finished with all of your farewells you watched Oikawa enter the gates before you all left the airport. The car ride back home was the most awkward car ride you've ever been in. You would use your phone as a distraction but it was dead so you had nothing to do, and of course, due to your terms and conditions you two are not to talk to each other unless it's about Kenji. Tsukushima took notice of your discomfort and wanted to put you at ease but he remembered the no talking to each other rule. Honestly, I pretty stupid term if you were to ask him. From the rear view mirror he then notices Kenji curled up in a ball, sleeping peacefully in the backseat which made him chuckle lightly. What is so funny, why don't you look behind you and see for yourself? Rolling your eyes at his, mysteriousness, you looked back to the back seat and saw your son sleeping like a little fluff ball, to which made you smiled. Looks like someone tuckered themselves out, he did say he was drained after school, speaking of that, you better answer my question this morning. What is it now? Did something happen to Kenji, and if you're going mention the terms, I followed them, so spill it. You didn't want to talk about what had happened he deserved to know, he is Kenji's father at the end of the day. Sigh of defeat, Kenji got into a fight with one of classmates, it was parent career day. I had asked Toru to accompany Kenji since I was out of town. One of his classmates kept pestering him about him and Toru not looking alike, of course Kenji told them Toru wasn't he real father and one thing lead to another. The next thing I knew I got a call from Toru that Kenji was suspended from school for starting a fight, I I didn't know, of course you didn't, cause you weren't there, when I got home we had a talk, he asked why you weren't the one I called instead to be with him that day, and you know what I told him. That I was no longer his father because I left, Tsukushima said sarcastically but you only scoffed. Idiot, if I did he would have hated me, then what? I told him that he should be grateful that Toru was there, that not all children are as fortunate as him to still have a father figure in his life, even if he wasn't his biological father. Even now, not many people get the chance to reunite with their father that had left, let alone have to father, silent Tsukushima, I'm sorry, I didn't know it would affect Kenji this much. It's alright, you can make it up to him now you let out a small smile at him and continued to look out the window, silence feeling the car once again. I will make it up to him, and to you as well, YN. To be continued.